Let's create Tetris in Python and Pygame, helping you to understand fundamentals of game programming and, and programming. Before we jump into code, let's quickly recap what Tetris is. Tetris is a puzzle game where players arrange falling blocks. The blocks are called tetrominus. It comes from Greek word tessera, which means four, and polyomino, which is a shape formed by joining a number of equal squares edge to edge. Tetra here is the prefix used for four. Thus, tetrominos stands for shape composed of four blocks. The goal of Tetris is to create horizontal line. As the lines are completed, they disappear and player scores points. The game ends when the stack of the blocks reaches top of the screen. Now let's break how we will implement this in Python. First, we need to set up environment. I talked about one option in previous video. If you want to make it easier, install pure Python. There is no need for full-scale Anaconda or something similar. I will use Jupyter Notebook. We will need Pygame library, so pip install Pygame. Create a new Python file and let's start. First, we should import libraries. We will need Pygame and random. To check if everything is set correctly, try this simple code. Just run it. Nothing should really happen, just windows should appear. But if it will appear, we can continue. And if it doesn't, you did something wrong. Let's define constants. Constants are numbers which are not going to change during the execution. Block size, grid width, and grid height. One block will have 30 times 30 pixels, grid will have 10 blocks width and 20 blocks height. The shapes are defined using zeros and ones. One stands for block and zero or nothing stands for nothing. For instance, I shape. You can see four ones, which means four blocks next to each other lying on the same line. The same principle applies for others. In the classic version of the game, each shape is associated with certain color. Let's do that. We are going to use these. From the programming perspective, what we use? Tuples for colors, constants, and a 2 list to represent the Tetromino shapes. To have our code clean and modern, we should use object-oriented programming. Thus, the heart of our game will be Tetris class. We have constructor to set the basic things. If we have an option to create new piece, check if the desired move is valid. We want to have an option to place a piece being part of the grid. We want to remove full rows in case the row is complete. We want to have an option to rotate the piece, of course, draw it all and well, run it. This class encapsulates all the game logic, making the code organized and easy to understand. From the game dev perspective, one of the most important thing is game loop. We implement our game loop in a method run. You can see here that the loop handles events uh, like quitting or key press. It updates the game state and draws the new state. This is basically what every game loop is about. You need to take all inputs from the user, update all entities which shall be updated and draw everything. So we have input handling, update and draw. Event handling here is represented by processing events coming from the, let's say, window handling, such as quit, and also inputs from the user, such as key press, directly controlling the folding piece. Continuing with update and draw. The drawing itself can be tackled by several ways. What we are going to do here is to have two blocks, one for drawing placed pieces, these are already part of the grid, and the second one to draw current piece, the folding one. First line is important, you should fill everything black. If you wouldn't, you would see the ghosts from the previous frames. You can try. Drawing the grid pieces, we should access them. In Python, we can use enumerate for grid. Enumerate in this case returns a number of the row and the row itself, following by enumeration of the row, which returns cell in the row and its color. And now we draw a rectangle using the constants we defined at the beginning. Drawing of the current piece is quite similar. Just for the first enumerate, we are not referring to the grid, but to the current piece. Let's dive deeper into important programming concepts here. Object-oriented programming. Our Tetris class is a prime example of OOP. It encapsulates the game's behavior and state and provides the methods to operate on this state. We have two-dimensional lists, two-dimensional arrays. It means we have a list within a list. There is game grid. We have rows in certain width and height of certain number of rows. And of course, the Tetromino shapes. Another thing is enumeration that's very Python-specific. It's a way to easily extract data from the more complicated structures. It returns the index from the structure and the data there. This allows easy access to both position and content of each cell. Critically important is of course the game loop, implemented in the run method and running continuously until the game is over. It handles events, it updates the game state based on the time, it redraws the game and, you know, each and every frame there is infinite loop, infinite, repeating itself till game over. And for instance there is a timer setting controlling the folding piece. Because this is running every frame, we can easily monitor timing here. As a part of the game loop, we have event handling. Event handling is done within this cycle. 
It is actively asking Pygame if there is any new event, and if yes, it is trying to process it, such as move the falling piece if the move what we are trying to achieve is valid. And the last big thing is collision detection, which is crucial for valid moves and piece placement. Collisions are handled in a method valid move. This method checks if a piece at a given position X and Y is valid. It ensures the piece is within the grid boundaries and check for collision with the placed pieces. And there you have it! We've covered the basics of creating Tetris in Python. This project demonstrates fundamental game development concepts that you can apply to other games as well, and we are going to do it in this channel. Remember, the best way of learning is doing. As a homework, try to extend this game. You can add a start screen, difficulty levels, or sounds. That would be all. Thanks for watching and see you next time.